Hi everyone. This is our look at redefining asses and bases. Our traditional definition of asses and bases that we're exposed to in Science 10 is called the Arrhenius definition. This is named after the Swedish chemist Svant Arrhenius. That definition says that acids are chemicals that dissociate to produce hydrogen ions. Here we have HCl dissociating to H plus and Cl minus. It's an acid because it dissociated to produce hydrogen ions. Bases dissociate to produce hydroxide ions. Here's potassium hydroxide dissociating into potassium ions and hydroxide ions. This is the explanation for acid and base properties. Acids have a pH below 7, turn limits paper red, phenolphthalein says clear, they're corrosive. Why do they have those behaviors? Because they dissociate to produce hydrogen ions. Bases have a pH higher than 7, they have a slippery feel, they're alkaline, they neutralize acids, they turn limits paper blue. Why do they do all that? Why do they have those properties? The explanation from Arrhenius is it's because they dissociate to produce hydroxide ions. The thing is, there are chemicals with all the properties of bases in particular, but that don't include hydroxide ions. For example, ammonia NH3. If you have some ammonia, it has all the characteristics of a base. It turns litmus paper blue, it, it is alkaline, it can neutralize an acid, etc. But, first of all, it's molecular. It doesn't dissociate. In addition, just looking at the formula, it doesn't have hydroxide ions in it. So that's a signal that there's a problem with this theoretical framework. A scientific law is not allowed to have exceptions. So, here in Chem 20, our expanded definition is called the modified Arrhenius theory. However, in Chemistry 30, in the subsequent course, we're going to call this the Bronsted-Lowry definition of acids and bases. Think about it. There's an exception. There's more than one exception, but there's a problem with this established scientific theory. So, it means it's not quite right. And a way to become famous is to come up with the solution. So we have individuals at the time who recognize this issue who are trying to solve it. And at the time, we have Johannes Bronsted and Thomas Lowry independently coming up with this new definition of what an acid is and what a base is to try and explain any exceptions that weren't accounted for by the old school Arrhenius theory. It looks like this. Acids are proton donors. This is really just almost a semantic change if we're thinking about just the words because a proton is a hydrogen ion. We think about the image, the Bohr diagram, say, of a hydrogen atom, and we take that electron away. What's left behind is a proton. A proton is a hydrogen ion. That's a really important thing for your future. Whenever you hear someone say proton to you in chemistry, what your mind should think of is hydrogen ion. A proton is a hydrogen ion. So the definition is almost the same. Acids dissociate to produce hydrogen ions. Acids dissociate to produce protons. But over here, acids are proton donors. Acids are hydrogen ion donors. But when we look, think about the reaction, it's a little bit, it's quite noticeably different. Hydrochloric acid, say, is an aqueous solution. That means it's in water. And, according to this modified Arrhenius theory, or what we're going to call Bronsted-Lowry in the future, the hydrochloric acid actually reacts with the water in its container. The acid donates a proton to the water. This H+, the proton, moves from the HCl to the water. If we take the hydrogen away, we get the chloride ion, and H2O picks up this H+, we get H3O+, which is called a hydronium ion. Bases, however, are proton acceptors. This is very different now. Over here it said bases dissociate to produce hydroxide ions, but our modified version is bases are proton acceptors. 
Bases are hydrogen ion acceptors. Here's our ex exception from the earlier case, ammonia. It can also be aqueous, and there's the water. If it's aqueous, it's in water. Just like our acid reacted with the water, the base can react with the water too. But bases are proton acceptors, so it gains that H+, gains that proton. NH3 becomes NH4. It went from neutral also to positive. And the H2O, the water, gives away a hydrogen ion to the ammonia, and we get hydroxide ions. Oh, so in an indirect way, it's still about hydroxide, but the path to get there was a little bit more difficult than with our earlier understanding. Acids are proton donors. They give a proton and end up always producing these hydronium ions. Bases are hydrogen ion, proton acceptors which almost are always going to lead to, in an indirect way, back to hydroxide. This is a revelation for us because, depending on the situation, water can be both an acid or a base. This is different. Instead of thinking about water as neutral, as neither an acid or a base, it's actually both. Well, here's the acid giving a proton. Well, what's the water doing? Gaining it. This is an acid. There's the water acting like a base. Here, NH3 is the proton acceptor, but where does it accept the proton from? From the water. There, the acid is a proton donor. So, water is not neither an acid or a base. It's both. And it depends on the situation, whether it's going to act like a base or act like an acid. We have, water's not the only substance that can be both, depending on the situation. We have a special name for those. It's called amphiprotic. Protic, because it's about protons. Protic, protons. And amphi, meaning like both. Think about amphibians, frogs. Amphibians, they live in the water and on the land. They do both. Amphiprotic. So, our old school definition was called arginius. It was based on some ideas we've been working on lately, especially dissociation. Hydrogen ions, hydroxide ions, but there was a problem. It's not able to account for all situations, so it needed to be modified, which in the future we're going to call Bronsted-Lowry, which has this new definition. Acids, proton donors, bases, proton acceptors. The chemicals themselves react with the water that they're being part of the solution with. This has the new idea that some substances can be both acids and bases almost at the same time, and this fancy new vocabulary word, amphiprotic. Especially with acids, we're going to see this H3O show up all of the time, which is called hydronium ions. I hope that helps.